All right, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a very chill tier list and I'm going to be talking about the best late game civilizations in 1v1 Arabia. And I'm hopefully going to include Romans at the end of the tier list as well. I'm going to stick them into the tier list and hopefully I remember. If I forget again, I am literally the stupidest top player there is in the game. All right, with all that said, let's go ahead and hop right in. I'm going to go alphabetical order as always to the tier lists and we're going to go ahead and get started with the Aztecs. So again, we're talking about best late games for Arabia. What I mean by late game is when you get to 200 pop, you're in Imperial Age, and it's not like you have all these technologies. You can't just jump to like, okay, you can get like Siege Onager, no problem, Monks will upgrade, no problem, Paladin, all at the same time. Let's be realistic about this. Like a realistic late, late game comp, we're gonna consider the fact that gold is a scarce resource, consider the fact that you can't get all the tech in the world, we're going to talk about, you know, what is the usual late game that you can go for, but I'll consider some of the potential that you have with every civilization. If you have all five relics, for example, that'll count for a small factor, but for the most part, we're going to be pretty realistic about what kind of late games you can get to. All right, now let's get started with the Aztecs. Now the Aztecs can get some solid options in the late game, but they are actually, can we go the opposite way? Can we start from the bottom from Vikings? Does that work? No, nah, it's not gonna work too well. Okay, we'll start with Aztecs. My bad. This is why I should edit these, but I'm not going. I'm not going to. Uh, all right, we have the Aztecs here. Um, they have a decent late game. Uh, it, the thing about the Aztecs though is I feel like the late game kind of runs out of steam. Like I'm conflicted about it. If they have got gold, the late game is insane. You got eagles that are like super spammy. They got the mobility. You also have monks with 95 HP potential. You also have siege onager, siege ram, all the good stuff. Um, so you actually have a lot of flexibility. Champions, you have the Atlanta Skirmishers, Jaguar Warriors that could come into play. Although champions are much better than Jags, to be honest, uh, in most cases. Uh, but yeah, Aztecs just kind of have a good amount of everything. I just feel like sometimes when the gold runs out, sometimes pikemen and skirms aren't enough. But I've also lost late games, even with Hussar Sips against pikes and skirms from Aztecs. So on one hand, they're, they are really good with pike skirm. On the other hand, sometimes I feel like it's not enough. So... I would put them overall in B tier for late game. And I would say some matchups are harder than others for Aztecs, but overall, especially against Archer Sibs, I feel like where they can abuse the Skirmishers, I feel like then they're really good. And Eagles do really well against Archer Sibs. But sometimes against Cav Sibs, you could have some trouble if you can't afford like monks and whatnot. You could die to Hussar rates and stuff because Pikes are not as good as Hobbs, even with the plus eight attack. All right, next up we got Bengalis. Um. Bengali's late game. I gotta think about this one. Actually, Bengali's late game is pretty bad. Like, yeah, you have Wrath. I'm gonna put them C tier. You have Wrathas, but those are like kind of fake. And you have Elephant Archers, but in 1v1 Arabia, Elephant Archers aren't great. You get really hard rated by like Hussars most of the time. And then Elephant Archers die to like Monks and Skirms quite hard. Like, usually Bengali's even struggle to deal with like Halb, Monk, and Skirm. Like, th those kind of comps are really annoying for Bengali's to deal with. So I would say Bengalis are like really good in late game in certain situations, but because they're lacking the plus four armor on their on their infantry and their halbs, especially, I feel like sometimes you just die to like cav skirm matchups, and those can be really difficult to deal with. Some like Hassar Paladin with some skirms. That could be super hard to deal with as Bengalis, especially if the guy can mix in monks to deal with the elephant arches as well. So yeah, good in certain situations, but most of the time pretty bad. Next up, we got Berbers. I think it's going to be an easy A tier, actually. Maybe even S tier. Uh, could it could actually be S tier, to be honest. It might be S tier. I'll see. Maybe I'll drop it to, to A tier later. But I think Berbers are one of the best at, like uh, late game civs. You have the Camel Archer, which is better than a Cab Archer for late game scenarios. Uh, it also heals with unique text. That's insane. Uh, you also get cheap Hussars. Can't go wrong with those. And you also, on top of that, get champions and you get Bomber Cannons with Siege Engineer. So like Berbers literally have everything you need in late game to succeed and to have a good uh, good time. You also have Genitors if you need them and then uh, full upgrade Elite Skirm. So very flexible. Uh, I really enjoy the Berbers actually in late game. Uh, usually the problem with Berbers is that you don't get to late game or you're a bit too linear. Like you're playing like Knights and Castle and so you, if you go Knights at the Cavalier, the guys don't help. <laughs> Simple as that. And then sometimes transitioning from Knight to, Cav to Camel Archer can be a tricky. And usually Camel Archer and Knights or like Cavalry are your only two big options. And so sometimes you get countered and pushed way too fast before you can get Camel Archer and the Cavalry and Hussar Camel Archer light cap. So that's like their biggest weakness. But if you get there, then they're super strong. 
Bohemian late game. Now on Arena, this is easily a, like S tier okay, or like at least A tier. But on Arabia, I'm not convinced. I think Bohemian late game can die to like Hussar raids plus like Skirm bomber cannon of most most civilizations, honestly. Um, which sounds really weird because the like, Hufnits are supposed to be insane, and of course they are. How Hufnits is still really insane. But when you have to deal with raids constantly on Arabia, um, then like Bohemians just really, uh, they, they don't feel too hot to play. And like your food monks aren't really that good. Um, it's too hard to get that upgrade and also have a good economy. Because the problem with Bohemians is not like, the problem is not running out of gold. The problem is actually surviving the constant raiding. So even if you run out of gold with Bohemians, you don't usually have the food to pay 100 food per monk. And so I would say that upgrade or that that option is kind of fake it's not actually like a proper option so yeah i don't know bohemians and also last thing i'll say about that like a, a monk is not like a hussar where you can just raid and like you can it's flexible monk is like a hundred food and it sits in one place and in late game you just get sniped by hussar most more often than not so like the hundred food monk just doesn't really work out as good as uh, you'd expect it would and I, I think i put them in c tier but above bengalis like it's a good c tier option if that makes sense Next up, we got the Britons. Uh, Britain late game is actually insane. Like, if you've got gold, that's really good. I'm going to put them top of B tier because I think it's contingent on having gold. If you run out of gold, Britons are not that impressive. Uh, what are your no gold options? You have Skirms with plus one range. That's pretty good. You have Light Cav with full upgrades minus Bloodlines. And then you have How with your full upgrade. So it's not bad, but missing Bloodlines on Light Cav is pretty problematic. So And like not having Hussar, obviously. So Britons are like average if you run out of gold but like they're really good if you still have gold or if you have like the way i like to play them is have 50 longbows they never die and then you just spam like light cav and halberdier to defend the longbow and to just trade and so what ends up happening is yeah you just get so much value with the longbows and they never die you have five trebs they never die you just protect them with everything and britain's late game is insane in that situation so i can see them being bumped to a tier later but at the very least top of b tier Okay, next we have Bulgarians. Um, Bulgarians' late game is interesting. They, they're they lacking Bomber Cannon, which can sometimes hurt. But they have really cheap Siege upgrades in the Siege Workshop. They have one of the best Hussars in the game. Stir up Hussar is crazy. They have the 200 Swordsman with extra armor, which is really good against Halbs in late game. And of course, they have their own Halbs. They also get Bracer on Skirms, but they're lacking the last armor on their Skirms, though. So that's a bit weird, too. So I would say Bulgarians are, like, solid in late game. But not 100% the best um i'll probably put them bottom of b tier again hussars is a really big factor for arabia and having stir up hussar is crazy good but i would say stir up hussar is carrying the bulgarians like you need to have stir up hussar and you need that to be very effective because or else it's not going to look go too well and like if you have gold with bulgarians it's not that important like gold just gets you either like conics or 200 swordsmen or siege or you can get like uh he like heavy ca if you want so, like, gold helps you, but your main unit is usually the Stirrup Sassar, which doesn't cost gold. But, obviously, gold is still important. It's not like you don't mind gold with Bulgarians or anything like that. But it's it's one of the sieves that's, that gets better when there's no gold. Because it's no gold game is probably better than your opponent's no gold game. So, I would say Bulgarians, really good for late game. Even better in post-late game, in post-imp. And if it wasn't clear already, this video isn't about, like, there's no gold in the map. This is, like, late game, you can still have a gold army. It's not, like... Two hours in, it's more like 45 minutes to an hour in, if that makes sense. I should have clarified that at the start, but of course, I'm stupid. And it happens. It happens like that. Actually, I shouldn't say I'm stupid because if you say stuff subconsciously, your mind starts to believe it or something. I don't know. I read something about that where like you shouldn't talk yourself down because like your mind actually believes that. So you actually you should actually talk yourself up most of the time. Don't be arrogant about it, but most of the time you're gonna talk yourself up. That's why before a series, before a tournament game. You'll never catch me saying, oh, I'm probably going to lose. Oh, uh, I'm not good enough. This guy's better than me. Because if I talk like that, even if I'm just faking it for like the public and just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on stream trying to look good for my fans. Even if it's like that, subconsciously, my brain actually registers the, oh, I'm, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose this guy. So I'd never say that. And I shouldn't say that in videos either. So, okay. Self-realization here. Anyways, this is the worst serious video I've made in my life, by the way. Anyways, I'm <laughs> distracting, wasting a lot of time. Anyways, Burgundians. Let's keep going here. The people are looking for cheerless content, not psychology contents from a non-psychologist. Uh, okay, Burgundians. Um, the other game is interesting. I think the fact that they get the gold from the farms kind of helps them out quite a lot. And if you have relics, Burgundian late game is sick because you get food and gold for your relics. 
But honestly, aside from that, Burgundian, Burgundian late game isn't that insane. Uh, you're missing Bloodlands, your Hussars are kind of like lacking a little. And you don't have the most amount of like powerful late game options. Like Custodia, not bad. Paladins, not bad, but you're missing Bloodlands on Paladins. And then aside from that, like I think the best option for, Bulga for Burgundian, sorry, Hand Cannon and Bomber Cannon. Like Those are really strong because they do extra damage. But even then, you're missing Siege Engineers. So it's hard to say where their late game falls. Um, I'll probably say... Uh, right around here. They used to get carried by uh, Flemish Revolution. That, that used to be their late game. But it doesn't really work too well anymore. So I'd probably put them in C tier. Next, we got Burmese. Oh, I love Burmese. Late game for Burmese. Um... Let's see. Let me think. You get full upgrade Hussars. You get extra three attack on your Halbs and Champions, which is pretty solid. You get Bracer on your Skirms. Yes, you're missing armor, but like armor and Skirms is not the most important in like most scenarios. It's only like really important against like Arbalest and against Heavy CA. But usually against Heavy CA and Arbalest, you don't rely only on your Skirms. You're relying on your Manu for Cavalry Hussars. This is what people don't understand about Mermis. They think, oh, I died to Archer saves every game, Hera. Mermis are really bad. No, Burmese are good. You go Manipur Cavalry, you raid the entire map with Hussars and Cavalry, and then you swarm your opponent's archers with 50 Hussars. And if they have Halbs in front, then you can go Skirms with the purpose of sniping the Halbs. And I think if you play it like that, then the Burmese late game is actually fine versus Arbalest Sims. And you just trade them down until their gold runs out, and you can win that way. And against Cavalry Sims, you have the Halbs with plus three attack, and you have Monks with cheap tech. So against Halbs, against Cavalry Sims, you're fine as well. You also have Arambai, which is a really strong, powerful uh, anti-cav unit, anti-infantry unit as well. So yeah, Arambai is a power unit in general. I, I would put probably Burmese, mm, maybe even ahead of Aztecs in late game. I think the fact that they have Hussars also really helps. Yeah, probably behind Britons. This makes sense. Although I think Burmese could beat Britons in late game. But it could be a hard matchup. Alright, next up we have Byzantines. Uh, oh, this late game Civ is super strong. I think it's going to be my first eighth year Civ. This late game, listen, it might be surprising that it's not S tier to a lot of you guys. Because you might be thinking, okay, there's no gold. Byzantines are the best Civ. But they're actually not the best Civ. Byzantine have amazing trash units. Skirms and Halps. But they're lacking the last attack on their Halps. And they're lacking good Hussar. They're missing Bloodlines. And to attack. And so often what happens with Byzantine is your late game isn't actually the best. Uh, a lot of Sips can actually match your late game and can outrate you and outpace you. But where Byzantine shine is where they have a little bit of gold to go like heavy camels. Cheap heavy camels are so good. They, they can go halves, skirms, all at once with some monks and siege mixed in. And they kind of go for this really big mix, kind of a, a concoction of units, if you will. And they win the games that way. That's where Byzantines truly excel in the late game. Uh, they also have options like Cataphracts, which shuts down infantry uh, civilization. So for a lot of those reasons, Byzantines are very good in late game. Um, they also have Siege Rams, of course, Bomber Cannons, nothing wrong with them. Missing Siege Engineer could hurt them. But overall, usually how you win late game with Byzantine is you just trade a lot of Halbs and Skirms. And you trade not only like the cost of gold, but they're cheaper. So you save a lot of food and wood on them. And so you just trade really efficiently like that. And then with like your small amount of gold, you just go for like Heavy Camel or Cataphract or something. Maybe even bombard towers. You just use your gold on something to support your trash weapons. And that's usually the way to go, the trash units. All right, next we have Celts. Listen, Celts on closed maps are really solid. On open maps, the late game is pretty mediocre, I would say. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Celt late game. You have Hissar, but they're one of the worst in the game. Lacking last armor, lacking bloodlines, so not great. Um, Halbadir, super solid. They move a little faster. Skirms, though, no bracer, no armor. So the skirms are so bad. Um, yeah, not a fan of Celts late game. It, you have to play with the siege, but the siege is pretty limited on, on like Arabia with all the raiding going on. So I would say probably a C tier Civ, but I would probably put them ahead of Bengalis. Uh, no, probably not, because Bengalis have monks as well. They have some powerful gold units, whereas Celts, your only chance in late game to win is to like, I'd say go like, go how plus siege and hope to like, push really fast to your opponent, even if they're raiding you, it doesn't do it enough. I think that's the way to play Celt late game. Yes, they have some good matchups, like they can match up like, well against certain civilizations, but usually if your opponent has like monks or bomber cannon or heavy like Hussars plus Arbalest civilizations, you'll probably just die to those because you'll get raided to death and they'll just use bomber cannons to snipe your siege. All right, next up we got Chinese. The late game is like 
middle of the pack. It's like they have a little bit of everything. And there's nothing really wrong with the Chinese in late game. But there's nothing too right about Chinese in late game as well. Sorry, my cat is not allowed to be here. It knows as well. Because it moves the mic. So I'm trying to slowly push her off the table there. Perfect. She'll jump off and she'll be fine. Happy as well. Uh, all right. So Chinese... Nothing wrong about them in late game, but they have a lot of options like Heavy Camel. Uh, they have Chukunu, Arbalest, you know, Super Solid, Seedram. Where, where are they lacking in late game? No Bomber Cannon and no Siege Engineer. So like Onager Wars, they're lacking. Bomber Cannons, they're lacking. Um, so yeah, Chinese could run into some pretty big problems uh, in the late game from those options. They're also lacking like some really strong Monk tech. Actually, now that I think about it, do Chinese get Siege Engineers? I'm not sure. Let me check. It's, I don't want to say something wrong. I was dubious about that. Uh, Chinese, please. Yeah, you're missing it. Okay, I just have to double check. My bad. Yeah, so Chinese missing siege engineers. So that's pretty bad. And uh, yeah, you, you like you have to play with like heavy camel plus arbalest plus halbs and hope that the mainline units are enough. You also don't get hussars, but you get everything else full upgrade in terms of trash units. You get champions, but no supplies, so it's pretty decent in every regard. I'll probably put them like bottom of B tier. I think a standard like strong Hisarsiv usually can be Chinese, unless Chinese goes double gold comp, like heavy camel plus arbalest, then it's like, okay, that's really strong. But usually that's not like the Chinese late game being really good. That's more or less like Chinese like mid game being really good. It gets ahead and then it finishes you off with arbalest and heavy camel. And that's the way it, it just wins. But usually, like in late game, you can go like, even with still like Bulgarians, you just go like heavy scorpion or onagers plus halves and and hussar, and you you got mobility, you got power, and you can easily beat the Chinese like that. Well, not easily, but it's possible. All right, next up we got the Cumans. Cumans late game is like mm, I would say like pretty solid, but not the best. Like, you kind of rely a lot on your faster producing stables for Hussars, Hussar spam, but even that's not, not like that good. Like, Bulgarian Hussar are way better than Cuban Hussar. Even if they produce faster, your Hussar does better. So I would say Cuban late game is, like, pretty average. Uh, I, I'll probably throw them in top of C tier. Yeah, maybe, actually, probably less. Yeah, probably, like, right here, uh, middle of C tier. You don't have Bombard Cannons, and you don't have Bracers, so, like, you're pretty mediocre on, like, what options you can go for. So they're, they're getting hard carried by the fast producing Hussar. If, if it's a good game for fast producing Hussar and that's enough, then sure, you can win. But otherwise, missing Bracer on Skirms. Kipchak is not the most impressive late game units. They don't really have any powerful gold unit that like just never dies that's really strong. Like Kipchak is okay at that role, but not great. Not like a manga die. So I don't know. I think, I think Cumans late game is like pretty whack. Uh, where are they strong? Probably like after 2TC booming or like being super far ahead that they all encastle you and that, that's enough or like they just raid you to death sure but most of the time it's a pretty average Hisar 7 late game uh, next up Javidians uh oh man the, you guys would probably expect to see Javidians really low I'm thinking of putting them D tier just so Viper can make a reaction video and then I can reply with my own reaction video and I don't know I feel like that's a fun way to go about it but I, that would be lying because Dravidians don't have a D tier late game. The late game is actually decent. I think Wood Steel and the faster firing skirmishers are actually insane. So I'd put probably Dravidian late game around um, probably top of C tier because you're still missing Hassar and that's like kind of problematic. So I'll put them in top of C tier. The, the Wood Steel in their Halbs is really good. It makes it so Halbs beat other Halbs consistently. It makes it so Halbs can even beat champions. Light Cav is also really good against other Skirm. Even if you're missing a ton of upgrades on Light Cav, you just hurt it. you're hitting for so much, so it's a strong unit or a decent unit uh, at, at the very least. And your, your Skirm's firing so much faster is also really solid. You also get Bomber Cannons, so nothing too bad up there. And if you're able to go champions with your gold, you're able to go like Urumi Swordsman in some cases is okay. And then you can go like Arbalest plus Bomber Cannon. And okay, their late game is really not that bad. Uh, especially, like I said, Wood Seal being the thing that actually carries them. Like Champions and Halps are really good. Um, so yeah, good infantry. They also have Siege Onager, I think. So it's also not bad. Siege Rem. I don't think they have, they have the Elephant. So Siege Elephant plus Siege Onager is not bad too. Uh, but yeah, uh, not a bad Sif for late game. But obviously not one of the better ones. But it's not like a bad late game. 
Uh, next, we have Ethiopians. Uh, I think I'll put Ethiopians actually like above Chinese. Uh, maybe, yeah. I think right there is perfect. The late game's insane. If you can go like Arbalest plus Siege and help. Like, that's like a really good late game for Ethiopians. Uh, it is contingent on you having gold. So, in fact, if you have gold, it's maybe even better than something like Aztecs. But Aztecs have a better trash game, so they're a bit higher. Same with Bulgarians. But contingents on having gold, Ethiopians are really freaking good. Chattel Warriors are always great against Skirms. If the opponent is not on Skirms, you have Arbalest, Halb, plus Bomber Cannon, or plus Onagers, plus Siege Ram. And it's such an insane composition. Um, yeah, it's like faster firing Arbalest, Torsion Engine, Siege, it's crazy good. Halb with your Force full upgrades. You also get Hussar, but you're lacking armor, the last armor on Hussar. Uh, and you're also lacking Bloodlands. So the Hussar are a bit dubious. I would still make it sometimes. It's not bad. But uh, it's not great either. So that's kind of how I think about Ethiopians. But I I'd probably put them right there. I'm happy with it. Uh, next we have Franks. Oh, the late game is actually really freaking good if you have gold. But if you're not a gold, they're pretty bad. So I'd probably put them... Yeah, probably right behind Ethiopians, actually. And maybe even right behind Chinese, yeah. Because even if you have gold, it's not like the late game is that insane. But I, I probably put them right here. Uh, it's really close. Like Frank Chinese is 100% skill matchup. I'll probably put it right here, though. Uh, Franks, if they have gold, have a lot of options. People think it's only Paladin. Yes, Paladin is the most powerful, but you also have a really good Siege, like Heavy Scorpion plus Onager with Siege Ram. Uh, sorry, with Siege Engineers. You have Cap Ram only. And you also get Bomber Cannon, so you have a really good Siege. And you also have full upgrade helps. So, and champions are also, I think you're, you're, you might be only missing supplies. But other than that, you have full upgrade champion. You also have throwing Axemen and Henkin are near. So you have a lot of options. And on top of that, you also have the 192 HP Paladin. So I think Franks are like really solid if they have gold. But if you don't have gold, they start falling off. So I put them in the B tier. Um, but yeah, it, it is obviously contingent a little bit of having gold. Uh, they're not terrible if you run out of gold. You still get full upgrade help. Light cab with 72 HP. It's not bad. And uh, yeah, you also get, you know, uh, pretty bad scrims actually. But, you know, a decent late game overall. Contingent on gold to be powerful. Uh, next, you have Goths. Goths late game is actually very good. Um, yeah, I, I love Goths late game. I think this going to be another A tier stuff. Probably even ahead of Byzantine. Because the thing about Goths is that you don't need a lot of gold for them to function. If you get the Elite Husk roll, I could even see Goth being S tier late game, actually. Um, yeah, I'll probably put them S tier late game, probably even ahead of Berbers. That's quite the jump for Goths, but I, I surely believe it's. Like, you even get Hussar with missing upgrades. So even if you want Hussar, you have it. You're just missing last armor, but other than that, you're full upgrades. Amazing infantry. Champions, Halberdier, and Huskerl are really good. You're missing the last armor, but you produce so fast, they're so cheap. Amazing. Uh, infantry, extra attack versus buildings, they're great. And you don't need that much gold. The Husk Roll and the Champion are so cheap on gold that you can get by with a few relics and just selling with the market. Like, you don't need that much gold for Goths. Only issue with Goths, only downside to the late game, is that some matchups, like Teutons, for example, are really hard to win. But even in those matchups, Goths can still win by using, like, Hand Kinnanir mixed in with Husk Rolls. I've done it in the past. I've, be I've beaten Viper. Don't, don't make me, Viper. Don't make me look for the video for the game. I, I made a video for sure. It's just been a long time. It was me, Goths, versus his Teutons on Ghost League. This was like four years ago or three years ago when I was terrible, when E first came out. I was garbage, and I still won with Goths because I went like some uh, Hussar hand cannon and then switched into Huskerl later or something like that, and it was actually insane. So even in the hard matchups, you can still win with the Goths because you do have some decent options. Okay, next up we got the Gajaras. Ooh, Gajara late game is sick, actually. They're really freaking good. Probably put them in A tier right behind Byzantine. Maybe even ahead of Byzantine, though. And let me think. Yeah, yeah, so basically, the reason why they're insane is the, the upgrade that makes them cheaper on the food is super insane. Uh, all your units, 25% less food. I think 20 or 25, something like that. And you also get, like, the Shram Shriders, which are insane. Heavy Camel, which is insane, versus, like, Cav. Uh, you're missing Halb, you only have Spear, true. You have Full Upgrade Skirm. The unique units is really, really solid as well. Um, so overall, I would say Kucharas have a pretty good late game. I'm going to put it behind Byzantine just to play it safe. But their late game is really insane, especially with all the units being cheaper on the food cost. You also get Bomber Cannons, so you're not lacking in that department, which is, that's the most important siege weapon on Arabia. It's the most flexible between pushing buildings, units, and being able to move freely. Next up, we got Hindustani. Another really freaking good late game sieve. I'll probably put it top of B tier, though. I don't think it compares 100% with the top of A tier, but actually, no, it, it, it probably does, actually. Let me think about this one as well. Imp Camel, insane. Hand Cannon, 9 range, insane. You get Hussar full upgrades. You get Pikeman only, but you get Skirm full upgrade. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'll probably put it around here. I still think something, something like Gujaras ends up having more good matchups, but Hindustani is like really solid as well. So yeah, I'll probably put this around 8th year. I think that sounds pretty good. I might move them around, but uh, these are really good. The reason why Gujaras and Hindustani have like sometimes awkward late game is that sometimes you just need to have like the Paladin or the Nightline, and you don't have it. So that's the only downside to them. But aside from that, they have amazing late games. Uh, also, Hindustani have cheaper bills. So I think with the cheaper bills, we push them ahead of Gujaras. This is important. In late game, if you get raided, you have to remake your bills. Hindustani get cheaper bills in late game. They get to remake them a lot more easily than other civilizations. And that's a huge plus to late game in Arabia. So I'll stick them a little bit further ahead than Gujaras. Next up, we got Huns. Um, decent late game for the Huns. I'll probably put them uh, right here. I think that makes sense. Huns are solid because you have heavy CA that are discounted. A pretty decent discount nymph. Full of good Hussars, faster working stables, and also Tarkins that are pretty solid. Uh, Huns are great in late game, no complaints, super good. Um, passable Skirms as well, you're only missing the last armor on Skirms, so that's like solid. And you also get Halps, you're missing only the last armor for Halps. So again, you get a little bit of everything with Huns, but their mainline units, CA and Hussar, full upgrades, and pretty solid. So yeah, six, six, six Civ in late game. The weakness of Huns is really just getting there without dying, setting up your map without houses is awkward, but once you get to late game, it's a really smooth sieve. Uh, next we got Incas. Oh, Incas actually have an insane late game right now. I'm going to put them probably top of 8th tier. Uh, the late game is nuts because you can go like Tamayork or Eagle for your gold unit, and then you just go like a mix of Halb, Skirm, and even a Slinger if you need it, if needed against certain matchup. And you just like a bunch of food units that are naturally being discounted from the Inca bonus. And then you also have on top of that monks and siege that could work. So I would say Incas are really, really, really good. Even if you run out of gold, it's not like Aztecs where they have some weaknesses. Incas have amazing trash, like Halbs on a discount, Skirms full upgrade on a discount. So it's it's basically like Byzantines, but Incas have better gold units. And that's like the big difference between them and Byzantine, and in my opinion, what makes them better. Uh, next we've got the Italians. Super solid late game. Like, pretty much right down the middle. They can do Hussar full upgrades. They got Condotier if you need them. They got Arbless with a little bit of extra armor. Uh, they got Skirms. They got Genoese Expo. They got Bomber Cannon at a discount. Uh, so Italian late game is, like, super solid. Right down the center. Does everything right. Does everything fine. Uh, I might put them right near Ethiopians, honestly. I mean, thing is, like, Italians only beat Ethiopians if, if they run out of gold. Otherwise, Ethiopians have a better late game. Uh, but I, actually, yeah... Yeah, maybe I put them. Maybe Ethiopians is better because I think Ethiopians have much higher potential to their late game. So I put it like that. Actually, no, Italians are missing Hobbs as well. I'll throw them down one more. I think right here is fine. Decent right down the middle gameplay. Uh, uh, good options. Cavalier full upgrades, so solid. Just missing Paladin, of course, but yeah, really, really solid Civ. Middle of the back is great. Uh, next we have Japanese. I love the Civ. Uh, Japanese, I mean, listen, I remember watching Spirit of the Law like eight years ago. I was one of the first viewers on his channel, by the way. He doesn't even know that, I don't think. But um, yeah, I was one of the first viewers on his channel. Not to, not to brag or anything, but I, I was like a really high rated player, but I was like craving like AB2 content. Like there wasn't a lot of content back then. And then I, I stumbled across Spirit of the Law's channel. I was like, wow, this guy's like, he makes good videos. Like he'd make videos on like, one of the first ones like fish traps or farms. I was like, oh, let's, let's eat this up. He had a few other videos I was interested in. And I was just like, okay, this guy is sick. So I was one of the first few videos. It was also like a Japanese uh, late game. And I always liked how he talked about Japanese strength in late game is about mixing their units. And it stuck with me because even though I was a high rate player, I still like, I only played Huns. So like new civs, I didn't really know much about it. So it stuck with me because I was like, oh, this guy has a point actually. Japanese have a really good mix of options. Really strong helps. Great infantry in terms of gold units, champions, and samurais. Um, full upgrades even with supplies for the champions. You also get Arbless full upgrades. You get the Yasama Towers, which are really freaking good. And you get Trebuchets with Cataparudo that can pack and unpack. You also get Siege Engineers, so Onager play is good. So like you, you do a little bit of everything. And so the best late game with the Japanese, from what I found, Halb Skirm, nothing else, just trash units with Siege Monk Towers. It's so good. You, you literally just go like a bunch of trash units with Siege Monks and Towers. And you're able to slow push the entire map. And because you go no gold units, you can spend all your gold on buying stone for towers or on the siege and monk units. So it's such a good way to play with Japanese, and it has a lot of success for me. Uh, so that being said, Japanese late game is super solid. If you play that style, it gets even better. 
I, I'd probably put them. They also have decent light cap. I'd probably put them slightly even above Aztecs, maybe. Mm, yeah, maybe even above Burmese. Yeah, I, I value Japanese light game pretty highly for that reason. Their, their halves are also really insane, so I'd probably put them around there. Uh, they probably struggle to like close games against the, the higher ups. It's like, how do you deal with freaking cheap skirm Cesars with the unique unit mixed in? It could be pretty hard with Bomber Cannon. You know, it has some some awkward matchups. Excuse me, I put that up. It has some awkward matchups against the top subs, but otherwise pretty solid. Uh, next up, we got Kumur. Mm, I think Kumur a great late game. I'll probably put them in bot uh, bottom of eighth here. Has star spam with farms, amazing. Ballista Elephant and Scorpions, amazing gold units. Sea gems if you need them, super solid. And then you have Skirms and Halb that are passable. You're missing only Last Armor on Halbs or, yeah, Last Armor and Squires, I think. Which is like, okay, that's pretty bad, but like, it's passable. And then you're only missing Thumb Ring on Skirms, which is not that bad. And you have Arbalest if you need them. You have, um, you know, solid Siege options, Trebs, Siege Engineers. So I, I think if you go like Hassar plus like, yeah, Hassar, maybe Skirm, and then Ballista Scorp, it can be insane combination. Uh, yeah, they can do raiding game or death ball game. So they're really good at, at both of those styles. So for me, eight tier for Khmer. Their economy carries them though. Next up, Koreans. Uh, also easy eight tier. Mm, debating about above Khmer, but Koreans late game is actually actually no, it's not an easy eight tier. Wait, I was thinking like the the discount on wood units, but is it that good actually? Yeah, it's pretty good. Halps and Skirms are at a discount, which is really huge. And they also get the like, amazing towers. And if they have a bit of gold, they can go either Wagons or Arbalest usually. And those are like two very solid options. Arbalest at a discount as well, which is pretty good. So you save a lot of wood when you play the Civ. And their towers are also really good. Siege Onagers with 10 range can be insane. Barbicans, yeah, with Siege Engineer is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, let's put let's put Koreans bottom of A. But I, I, I can see them being like top of B. But I'll put them there. I, my intuition was right. Lithuanians, dude, I hate Lithuanians. Lithuanian late game. It should be so freaking insane on paper, but it ends up being so mediocre. Let me let me run it through. And it, the Civ has changed a lot. It, it got changed for the worse, in my opinion. I, I'm, I'm going to make a video about this because I'm not happy about it. Uh, Lithuanians got changed for the worse. I hate the Civ now. Basically, their late game went from being super strong, very flexible, to now being very mediocre. Like, you you need relics or else your late game sucks. Let me explain it to you. You're missing Blast Furnace. And you're also missing the last armor on halbs. So even with a unique tech, the halb has same pierce armor as a generic full upgrade halb, but you're missing one melee armor versus a generic full upgrade halb. So you're actually weaker than a halb. Not only that, you're missing two attack. So if it's halb versus halb, the Lithuanian player who has a unique tech is three damage less than a generic halb. So if it's halb on halb, you get destroyed. And then, okay, Maybe skirms are good. Yeah, skirms are the only thing good about Lithuanian late game. You get really good skirms, full upgrades that move fast, that move faster, and they also have the extra pierce armor. Those are good. So Lithuanian skirms are good. Halbs are bad. Halbs are bad, and their cavalry is only good if you have relics. Otherwise, their hussar, winged hussar, oh, so good. It's the same stats as a regular hussar, except five more HP. That's it. So the winged hussar, the upgrade costs more than regular hussar for five extra HP. Think of it, you're missing the last uh, attack upgrade. So you're either 7 plus 4 for generic Hussar with 95 HP, same armor. Winged Hussar has 9 plus 2 for Lithuanian. So 11 attack versus 11 attack and only has 100 HP versus 95 HP. So it's 5 more HP, that's it. And a bonus against gunpowder, which no one cares about for the most part. So Lithuanian late game is really not good. If you have relics for Lightus, okay, that's great. Skirm Lightus is solid, but it has so much potential. It used to be so insane. Oh, when they had Blast Furnace, but now it's not very good. Oh, it's not insane. I, I would probably put it like... Uh, probably above Burmese, right here. Like that. That's kind of where I put them. Contingent, if you have Relics, they're insane. Maybe with Relics, they jump up here. But on average, we get two Relics to three Relics. Yeah, they're not a very strong late game sieve in my opinion. I mean, maybe I can bump them a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little stingy, but Lithuanians could easily be S tier back in the day, but now I'll put them ahead of Britons, I guess, because uh, I think they win the, the Britain matchup and they probably beat a lot of these guys as well, just because their skirms carry them. But yeah, not as good as it could be. I spent too much time there, anyways. Let's go next. Magyars, S tier late game. Right behind the Berbers, could easily be ahead of them in, some, in certain matchups, but. Right behind the Berbers for me. Uh, Maga late game is insane. Maga Cowisher, incredible units. Followed up by Maga Hussar. Actually, they're ahead of Berbers. 
they might be even be ahead of Gots actually. They, they they're crazy late game. Like Magyar CA are insane. Magyar Hussar are great, and Magyar Hussar from the stable, the other one being ch uh, cheaper, is also really good. So you can go for a mix of those uh, or one of those two units plus the CA, and it's insane. It's incredible. Uh, you also get siege engineers, so your trebs are good. The only thing you're missing is like bomber cannon, but you can snipe enemy cannons with your cab archers. So yeah, if you play CA plus uh, Hussar. With the sieve, you'll almost never lose. The problem with the sieve is getting there. Getting there is really hard, but if you get there, it's amazing civilization. Uh, next up, we got Malay. Late game Malay is not incredible. It's like okay, I would say. Mm, yeah, you get it, it does like everything fine, but nothing spectacular. I'll probably put them like behind the Japanese, maybe even behind the Burmese. Yeah, but right there seems fine. Yeah, if you have some gold, they're, they're pretty good. Actually, no, even behind Aztecs, probably. Yeah. I mean, the good part about Malay is early imp, but if you don't have early imp play pressure, it's not that good, actually. Hold on, I'm dropping them a little bit here. Yeah, dropping them right here. Their light cab is abysmal. It's really bad. They have good elephants because they're cheap. That's fine. Their skirmish full upgrade, arbalest full upgrade, siege engineer, monks, all good options for Malay. Karambits are also not bad in certain matchups. It wins them the meso matchups. So for all those reasons, Ethiopians are like, oh, sorry, Malay are like solid, but their late game... It lacks a little bit of like a power unit, and they just don't really have that. Two-handed swordsmen are good though. Late game, two-handed swordsmen costing no gold is good. Um, so maybe that can bump them a little bit higher than maybe Ethiopians. But Ethiopians have a higher power spike, I think, higher ceiling. Um, so I would put Malay there, and I'm pretty happy with it. Two-handed swordsmen are not that good. Once they lost supplies, so the late game two-handed swordsmen they're good, but they're not like that that insane. Hisars usually deal with them and can raid around them, so no problem. Uh, next, you have Malians contingent on gold. Malians are really good late game because they have like heavy camel with Ferimba, Cavalier with Ferimba, Light Cab with Ferimba. So really strong stable. No Halbadir though, but the Pikes with actually Pierce Armor is not bad. Uh, you are missing the last two attack on the Pikes though. So they're not bad, but not great. Champions also not a bad option. Champ Scrawls, we call them. Not a great option, but not bad versus Archersivs. Gibetos are also pretty good. You have Cannons, which are solid. So Malians have a good late game, I would say, but um, probably contingent on them having gold. Uh, I think I'd put them somewhere in the in the B tier. Um, mm, mm, I can see them being right around there. Yeah, more options than these two sieves, but just weaker overall than those sieves. That makes sense for me right there. Uh, next, we have Mayans. I'm going to put Mayans in a pretty high category. But again, it is going to be contingent on them having gold. But once they have gold, their late game is actually really solid. It only has one weakness, which is Siege Onagers, in my opinion. Maybe heavy scorpions in certain in certain cases as well, but usually SO is their only weakness. Otherwise, they do really well. Um, I'll put them ahead of Burmese right here. So basically, like Mayans, they have their only good option when the gold runs out. They have full upgrade halb, and they have the skirms, which shoot two two javelins. That's like the only special thing they have. But if they have gold, the hundred HP eagles are nuts, like ridiculously broken. And plumed archers or arbalest being cheaper are also really strong options. So if you have gold, the Ar arbalest eagle combo with halbs is so insane. If you don't have gold, they're pretty mediocre, I would say. So I put them around there. Yeah, maybe a little higher up, a little lower up to you. But for me, it seems pretty solid to put them right around there. Uh, next, you have Mongols. A, that's another S tier. Above Magyar, Smuggles, epic late game, so freaking strong. Uh, Hassar with extra uh, HP, Mega one of the most broken units in the game. All kinds of the best siege that moves faster, Siege Engineer, everything is insane. You're missing cannons, but it literally doesn't matter because Mega can snipe cannons left and right. Bro, this civilization just has no weakness. It's so OP in the late game, in my opinion. The only problem with Muggles is that you don't get the hyper late game. Like, most smart players will kill you. Either in Castle Age, like before you get to like hyper amounts of Magadai, or in early Imp when you don't, you're not ready to fight yet. So like the problem with Mongols is that they're a little slow. But if you're able to get the late game comp, Mongols amazing, like literally incredible. Uh, next up, we got Persians. Eh, pretty decent late game actually. Trash bows are okay. It's a really expensive unit though. It costs a lot of wood, and the upgrade's expensive too. So not amazing. Paladin solid. Missing only Bracer, you have the last armor even on Skirms, so Skirms are okay. You have uh, Hand Cannon, Bomber Cannon, but Missing Siege Engineers. Um, Where does that leave the Persians? Somewhere in the C tier, surely. Yeah, full upgrade. So I'll put the, probably put them top of C tier. Like, nothing wrong with them. Trash bows are interesting. 
but nothing great for the for the Persians. Uh, next we have Poles. That's going to be actually an Estiasiv. I'm just debating where I put them. It, it might actually be the best late game in the game, by the way. Uh, I think Winged Hussar are straight up overpowered. I might even put them ahead of Mongols. Okay, this is like close. Mongols and Poles, it's very close. I think if you have full full work setup with Poles, like undisturbed full work setup, plus Winged Hussar spam, plus Arbless, plus Bomber Cannon with Siege Engineer, if you get to that comp, which is not that unrealistic, it's just that it's hard to play because setting up full works is like literally aids. If you get to that setup and you can hold it, Poles late game is the best. If you start getting raided all over the place, it gets pretty hard. So I would say it's very even between Poles and Mongols. The reason why Winged Hussar are able to compete with like versus, even versus Magadai is because you can spam them for so cheap with the Poles farms with crop rotation. So you can just send like 50 Hussars, just jump on the Magadai, kill 5 or 10, and then continue playing from there. And you have Arbalest that do good damage against the Mongol Cav. They do good damage against yours. So it's a bit like back and forth, but usually the, the splash damage that the Winged Hussar is enough to win those fights, I would say. But it's like super close. I'm going to put Mongols ahead just for nostalgia's sake, but I'll put Poles here. Portuguese, super good late game save. I'm going to try to go a little faster. Uh, cheaper gold units means you get to them really, really, like, really fast. You also get light careful upgrades. Uh, Halb only missing squires. Sheesh, my, my knowledge is on point. I know, I know like everything about these civs. Respect to me. The best thing I've done in this tier list video. Um... I probably made like three mistakes or, or more. You guys can probably butcher me in the comments about it, but I think I've been nailing it so far. Anyways, I have to go faster. What am I doing? Uh, Portuguese, let's go. Mm, bottom of A, actually. Actually, ahead of Koreans. Actually, ahead of Khmer. Yeah, ahead of Khmer makes sense. Because they have like really good Arbless, solid Halb, really good Bomber Cannon, good Caval Cavalier as well. Not bad. Oregon guns are crazy good. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, they probably die out to these civs like, uh, nine range hand cannons probably destroys them, and Shiram Shriders plus like you know cheap units can destroy them as well. But I'd say around here Portuguese makes sense. Um, yeah, it's pretty good like Arbless cannons of or organ gun cannons of. Next we got Saracens, another top tier, um, top tier civ. I'm gonna put them in A tier actually. Yeah, bottom of A. Saracens have really good tech tree, but no bonuses, no special bonuses on their units. So I would say for Arabia, you can't really get to Mamluks too often, but it is an option. But you can get to like really strong camels. You can get to full upgrade Hussar, full upgrade CA with, yeah, uh, Parshan tactics as well. So pretty solid. Yeah, not much to say. Like pretty pretty good tech tree. Just not a lot of bonuses to help you get there uh, or, or on your units. You're playing with like generic full upgrade units, but a good mix of them. Sicilian late game is solid. You have the farms that never run out is really good. Um, you have a good siege if it gets there. Sergeants are a decent option, and then you also get mm, you also get like yeah, not much else actually. A decent cavalier, they're a bit weird. I feel like they have some good matchups, but some pretty bad matchups. I'll put them top of C. Yeah, put them top of C. Not very confident in that though. Yeah, they're a bit of a weird sieve. Let me know where you guys play Sicilians. I'll put them here. I think their farm bonus, never-ending farms, can be like carrying them a little bit. Also, the fact that they have halbs full upgrades, skirm full upgrades, and also that they take less bonus damage, I feel like that could be pretty strong too. Uh, next, we have Slavs. Drushina's super good. Uh, I'm going to put Slavs probably... Probably right here, actually. Really good Hissar plus halb spam. With Drushina's incredible as well. Good Siege. Good Monks. Oh, maybe they can go even higher. Yeah, probably right, right here above Malay. That makes sense for them. I think it's the economy that carries them, but Drushina is also really good. Actually, Drushina is really good. They might go even higher. Uh, yeah, I'll probably put them right here, actually. I think Slavs are like super good. I, I probably prefer them over Bulgarians in late game as well. Drushina is really strong, plus having Hussars that are cheaper. Even if you're Bulgarian have better Hussar, you should be fine. And yeah, good, good Siege. You have the, the Death in its Castles. Castles costing some wood, less stone is super good too. Yeah, I like it. Uh, next, we got Spanish. Uh, Spanish late game is super versatile. They have everything full upgrades, uh, supremacy villagers, bomber cannons, conquistadors, and paladin as your gold units. Spanish is sick. I'll probably put Spanish right here, right up. Hmm. Yeah, right above Burmese. You have better tech than them. That sounds pretty good for me. Tatar late game, one of the best in the game. 
probably put them, yeah, probably somewhere in S tier, bottom of S tier. Really good CA, really good Hassar. That's the best comp in 1v1 Arabia, by the way. Heavy CA Hassar is the best comp in 1v1 Arabia. So, like, Hassars do a really good job getting there. And you also have Keshiks that are super good, too. Um, really good value unit. So, I would say for those reasons, Hassars are super high up there. Also, 19 range Trebs is nuts, really insane. Uh, and then you also get, in some cases, Flaming Camels can be good. Uh, or that like, could be interesting against Elephant Sibs, usually. And yeah, pretty good Sib overall. Uh, next two ins. This is this Sib is not that, that good late game on Arabia, actually. I think that this late game is pretty mediocre. It's kind of contingent on having gold. If you have gold, that's really good. In certain matchups, like against Franks, two ins late game looks amazing. Uh, I'd probably put two ins late game around somewhere here. Yeah. I think... Thing is, they're missing like even light cav. The scouts are like okay in late game, but the scout cavalry is like, nah, it's pretty. It's like okay at best. Uh, their halbs are good, and if they have gold, like yeah, they have siege engineers. So hand cannon, bomber cannon with halb is like pretty solid with monks. Like if they have gold, they're like pretty good. But once they run out gold, they're kind of like a fish out of water. I'll probably put the two inside ahead of Burgundians though, but they're pretty similar in what they can do. Next, if Turks. Uh, for me, it's going to be top of A tier, actually. Uh, really good Hussars, really good CA, but they are a, a weaker Hussar CA sieve compared to, like, Tatars and Berbers, usually. Um, but actually, no, not really. No, actually, not really. Mm, let me think about this one. Because you also get Bomber Cannons, extra two range, and Bomber Towers. Now, uh, they're actually might be stronger than Tatars, slightly stronger than Tatars, so I'll put them in the S tier as well. Um, again, the problem with Turks is that you have trouble getting to late game. Uh, but if you get there, they are quite insane. You also have Janissaries and hand cannons that could help out in certain cases. Next, Vietnamese. Okay, this will be A tier Civ, I'm sure of it. The late game is like really good with Imperial Scrims being crazy strong. Uh, light Cav, full upgrades, uh, except missing last two attack, which is not the most important. Uh, Halb, missing last two attack. So uh, they're like pretty mid, mid table, but I I'd probably prefer them over even Byzantine. Maybe even over Incas, because Imscrims, I think, carry them so hard. Um, and also, Rathen Archers are insanely good. And Elephants can be really strong for the Vietnamese, too. You also get Siege Engineers. So, yeah, I would probably put them ahead of Incas, even. I think this, the Imscrim is, like, the key, though, here. And then next up, we have Vikings. Probably pretty bad uh, Civ. Uh, probably somewhere in the seat here. Chieftains helps a little bit, for sure. Champions are, and Berserks are okay. Scrims, Arbalest are okay as well. Yeah, I'll probably put them, like, I guess right here. Makes sense. Yeah, so that's solid. So, hey, we didn't use the D tier at all. I mean, you can throw, like, the bottom three in D tier if you want, but I don't think, like, Kels is that much worse, worse than, like, two ins. Oh, actually, that matchup's impossible. That matchup's unplayable. Never mind. I don't think Kels is, like, that much worse than Vikings, for example. And, like, okay, there's certain matchups where Kels' siege help can be insane, but most matchups, Kels aren't winning. So that's the way to go. Even, like, Mayans, where, like, Kels are supposed to be better against them, or like good against them, Mayans can still win because they have like egos to rate them and stuff like that. So that's going to be it for the tier list for late game sevs. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you do things differently. And also let me know in the comments what other tier list you want to see. Also, if you made it this far in the tier list video and you're still watching for whatever reason, I know you're a true and dedicated Hera fan. So if you're a fan of me and looking for extra content and looking for build orders, go ahead and check out my Patreon. A link in the description below. It's also a great place to support me. I much appreciate any of your support there as well if you're interested. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe to this video for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.